Here we are, the Engway P275S step through. Um, so at the bottom of the 112 foot third of a mile climb, and we're going to do something a bit different today. I'm going to stop halfway up and do a standing start um, from halfway up the hill and see how we get on. But, well, well, let's see how we get on. And we're off. Let's see how we get on. As you've heard me mention time and time before, this is 112 foot over a third of a mile. So this has got a nine speed free wheel at the back. So we're gonna see how that goes. But nine speed, I've ridden it over here and it's, it works really well. This is why I'm confident about stopping halfway up. I'll check out the... Um, I'll check out the chainring size. And if I can find it, I'll add it to this screen. Well, it seems we're getting up here, no problem. I'm about fifth gear, but I'm going to drop it down a cog. And here we are. And we've stopped. So that's halfway up and we're off again. So, yeah, it's having no problems getting up here. As you can tell, I'm not out of breath. But coming up here, with the P75 Pro, it nearly killed me. It was exhausting. And the first time I attempted it, I didn't get halfway up. Second time I attempted it because I realized that I had to be in a lower speed to be in a lower gear. It was awful. This just glides up. So when it comes to hills, this thing has absolutely no problems whatsoever. It's brilliant. Well done anyway. But here's the thing, I'm absolutely determined to work a solution out to the pro. And I think I've found a different hub with a bigger speed ratio, more gears. And I'm trying to work out if it's worth buying that and adding it to the P75 Pro because that bike is a fantastic bike. I've, honestly, the battery never goes down, although it's obvious you do a lot of the work, but that battery never seems to go down. I've done pretty much 100 miles on it, and it's still saying 75%. I don't know. I don't know if the battery's going to fall off a cliff at around about 50%. I don't know how accurate the reading is. But that's what it's saying. I might actually get my multimeter out and have a look what the battery's at. Because that can't be accurate, and if it is, why aren't the battery being used? It's fat, it, in its own right, the Pro version is a fabulous bike. And if you live in Norfolk or anywhere flat, Amsterdam, Cambridge, Oxford, anywhere flat, it's a brilliant bike. It really is a brilliant bike. And in its own way, it's better than this. Well, I live in Hilly Yorkshire. And I've struggled to come to terms with it. Like I said, you can't get past the battery range. It's just amazing. So, yeah, we're going to see how we get on with that in a future video. I've no doubt that you can unlock this the same way as you did with that. And again, there'll be a future video for that. 
This has the Ananda 250 watt mid drive on it, which is different to the Bafang one. And I'll show you later what the display looks like. But it's a cracking little thing. I like it a lot. Here we go. Bit of familiarity. So we're going to head up into town and uh, check it out round town because this is what this bike's for. It's a commuter bike. And as you can see, genuinely having no problems getting up this hill. Just throw it into boost. Not going to bother changing gear. Really, you should change gear because this now is drawing on the battery. But yeah, as you can see, this has absolutely no problems with hills. And it's far more comfortable than it deserves to be. You look at that saddle and think, that's going to work doesn't it's fabulous although i wouldn't want to do 30 40 miles on it but you can get around town with it quite easily so you probably heard that clunking then and that's the gears and if any of you have ridden a mid-drive e-bike that's quite a common sound the gears engage almost instantaneously and then the, the motor has to adjust too so you hear a bit of a clunking sound unlike the other Angway bikes we pretty much hear just a click these work differently so while they have this down as a commuter bike it's more of a cross between a commuter bike and a touring bike I mean there's bolts on the front for which I assume is for a rack although I don't think they sell one yet and due to the popularity of these bikes because as I continue to say you, to get the most out of it you've got to put the effort in I don't think people get what these bikes are and they're not just for commuting I mean those tyres are brilliant, there's no noise coming from them, that means there's no, well barely any noise so that means there's no resistance no resistance means these are energy efficient they're really good tyres actually, They've got some really good grip on them so I've got these tyres set at around about 52, 53 psi, which is a bit lower than I should really have them, but at my weight it just makes the bike feel a little bit more comfortable which is ideally what I'm looking for a more comfortable bike but like I said you go over bumps with this you don't feel them you don't feel the bumps um, obviously running a lower PSI is going to affect the range of it but do you know I think this this bike's quite capable of doing quite some long range it will outrun me and to be fair I wouldn't want to be doing 60-70 miles on this saddle but for the cost of a saddle it ain't that much here we are you all know where I am well those that follow you I do I'm heading down to the canal path and then we're gonna take it along a little bit rougher ground but it's so nimble this thing I keep oversteering it and I know I'm oversteering it but again even on here listen to how quiet this bike is it's so peaceful down here and it's just a nice spot I love coming down here And this is why I think this is part touring bike. You know, you can throw some bags on it and go off on adventures on it, do your picnic. It's ideal for that. But the one thing, what I'm going to talk about in a minute is probably not going to surprise you, but surprise you at the same time. 
It's even reasonably quiet on this gravel. If I was on my Engine Pro 2.0 pipe right now with those four and a half inch wide tyres, it would be making what well, would sound like I'm being followed by bees. But like I said, even on this gravel, it's an heavy gravel, don't get me wrong, but it's quiet. It's such a quiet bike and it's such, I'm barely putting in any effort into this bike. Mainly because I'm on the flat, so I don't need to. So probably not drawing any power from the battery at the moment. And like I said, it's nimble. So getting through this little gate thing here, I, I often have to pretty much stop when I come through with a 20 foot by four bike. But look, it's so nimble. It's just Fabulous. So, so far I've done nearly 20 miles and I'm still showing four out of four bars and it's a pleasure to ride. You know, down the canal path that we were on earlier with all the gravel, it was fine. Like I say, look at this, it's so nimble. Like I say, I keep oversteering with it because I'm so used to 20 before tyres. But it's fabulous. So I'm going to get down and have a sit down a minute and have a drink. And we're going to talk about where Engway went a bit wrong. And like I say, I keep saying that Engway keeps doing these little things that are just that little bit wrong. Whereas if they'd done it right, they'd have the perfect e-bikes. And I'll explain that in a minute. But I'll explain the difference between this, the ST, and the Pro and where I think they've cocked up. So, let's talk about this bike and where I think Engway have made a bit of a cock up. That motor, that gear setup, should be in the Pro. The system in the Pro should be in this bike here. So historically, before you all start calling me a misogynistic sexist, 
I stepped through was a lady's bike. And it was a lady's bike because ladies wore dresses and skirts when they were riding. So they didn't want to show all their underskirts and everything else when they cocked their leg over to get on a bike. In fact, historically, nearly all bikes were step throughs when they first come out. But they've, they've definitely got the wrong motor and the wrong system and the wrong bike. This bike is an absolute pleasure to ride. It really is. Nine gears suits it really well. I've not struggled once with it on any hills whatsoever, which is the opposite of what I've had to deal with with the Pro. Now, don't get me wrong. The range on the Pro is just astonishing. It really is. But you're doing nearly all the work. On this, I don't feel like I'm doing any work. And it, it has a four bar at four bars battery indicator on it. And I've done 20 miles and I'm still on four bars. I've turned it off and I've turned it on again and it's still on four bars. So the range on this is, is enough. I mean, I don't see anybody needing to do more than 60, 70 miles in a, in a day on a ride and on that saddle, you wouldn't want to do it anyway. There's no, no problem with swapping that saddle out. You can put any saddle on there you want. And is the thing. This is where I find it all a little bit complicated. When I asked Engway to review this up against that, I said, what do you want the same bike twice for, basically? And I said, I'm curious to see what the gear system's like with that Ananda motor. So they sent me one out. And like I said, I wanted a black one. To be honest, I'd have probably, if it had been the black one, I'd have probably kept that and sold the ST, uh, sold the Pro. I've just come up a big hill and now I'm going to go down a big hill and I have no problems getting up the big hill no doubt I'm going to have no problems getting down a big hill all this seems to be stating the obvious this works so much more intuitively than the Pro where you expect the Pro to be doing the legwork. I think that's where the secret of its range comes from, that it forces you into doing more work. And to be honest, I don't mind doing that. I want a bit of exercise out of my e-bike. But I've had this in Sport, Boost, Turbo, 25 miles so far and well, I'm still on four bars. It's an incredible thing. So we're coming up to what I consider to be the second worst hill to cycle in the distance, hill to cycle up in Wakefield. I really don't like this hill. If it gets up here, I'll be amazed. I'll tell you what wouldn't make it up here. The Pro wouldn't. The Pro wouldn't make it up here. And the Pro wouldn't make it up here because of that fixed hub speed. So I'm doing 14 kilometers an hour up here. I'm not struggling with pedaling. I can feel a bit of burn in my thighs. But by now, I'd have probably got off the, uh, off the Pro 
and I'll be pushing it up here. Go up a cog. But this, as you can tell, I'm not out of breath. 36 volt system. Now this has five newton meters more of torque than the pro version. I think what Engway have done is thrown some tech kit, expen expensive tech kit, at a bike and looked at it and gone, that's cool. But they've not really ridden it. They've not really tested it. There we go. And we're at the top of the hill. I'd have quite happily put it into first, stopped, and started again coming up that hill with no issues. I'd still be waiting for the pro to catch up. So while if you're used to something like something with a cadence sensor on, this works completely differently. Because of the torque sensor, you have to put pressure on the pedals to draw from the battery. But in the case of this bike, you feel like you're getting some exercise out of it. So this, this is quite a steep hill, as I pointed out before. It's uh, well, it glides up here. I've gone into fifth. And let's turn all the power off. So I'm now down to zero power. I'll click the gears up. And yeah, get into a second. I can get up this hill without any struggling. And that's with no power. But you do feel that you're now therefore riding a heavy, heavy bike. But yeah, no problems. Let me sell some power again. So let's talk about the suspension. There isn't any. But because of those big tires, if these are racing tires, you know, one inch wheels, I'd feel like every bump going down here, but I don't feel anything. The tyres are obviously acting as the suspension for the bike. And it works really well. So what's it like riding around town? Well, it's fabulous. It really is. And I'm no worries that I've got to pedal slower because I'm on a hill. For me, I'm not too keen on the colourway, but it's a bit bright and obvious. I would have preferred one in black, but they'd already sent this one out before I requested the colour, so it's my fault, not theirs. But can you hear that? Nothing. And even when pedalling, nothing. Not a sound. The only sound you can hear is a little bit of tyre noise. So I'm coming up this hill, we normally see me coming up the roadside on this, but I like coming up the pavement side, it's part of the cycle path anyway. And as you can see, I'm having, I'm not out of breath, I'm having absolutely no problems getting up here. Any breathing noises through my noise, it knows it's through my fault, I've got sinus issues which I've had for over a year well in reality about four years but yeah I'm not out of breath 
this just takes everything in its stride as long as you don't want to be doing 30 mile an hour if you want to stick to the legal limits this bike is brilliant so let's go find another hill and get path through these lights before they change pretty much so let's talk about the range I'm just coming back into Wakefield now and I've hit just over 30 miles and in that 30 miles I've just dropped one bar it's just clicked over now Thirty miles out of one bar. I said I don't know if this is going to fall off a cliff. This battery at some point, but the one in the other bike in the Pro hasn't, not yet. But even let's say, because I've had it pretty much in turbo all the time. I've been riding it, which is one under the boost, which is the highest one. And if it stays true, it can do over hundred miles over 100 miles on one charge 36 volt battery To one of my favorite hills again i say favorite you know i don't mean it but this is a terrible hill and so far this bike's thrown everything i can throw at it really i'm genuinely impressed by how this bike works it's just well in comparison with the Pro, and I'll get into this at the end, this is a completely different animal. And oddly, it's not meant to be. I think the only difference is, there's one of them clunks there. The only difference is, is this is a step through. And I think the whole idea was that this was to appeal to the step through market. So there's another clunk. So the clunking is a misalignment between the gearing and the continual use of the motor. Now, Bafang actually have a gear sensor that they have for their mid drives. And you see, I'm not at a breath coming up here. Nine mile an hour. I felt a little burn in my legs, but nothing wrong with that. Anyway, get back to what I was saying. Yeah, Bafang 
for their mid drives they do a gear sensor that takes away that clunking I wonder if a Nanda actually makes one for theirs but to be honest don't need one this is early morning so this is when you'll be using one of these to commute to work and back going out early I've got up trying to catch the gold now for a bit of nice b-roll it's meant to be sunny today and Ta -da! it's cloudy-ish nothing new there then and as you can see most of the time you're not actually pedaling this thing it rolls on its own you know it's obviously when it's rolling it's not using any power the brakes are technical brakes they're good but again they're no better than the Logan copies that they've been putting on other bikes I actually like those Logan copy brakes one of the things I'd like to say about this bike is it's really comfortable which is something I didn't expect it's a better riding position than the pro version yeah this bike has really good road manners it's just just easy to play with it's just easy to steer I like this bike a real lot more than I should and like I said when you pull it up against the pro version with all that tech this works better this works far better it's far more enjoyable to ride with the pro you're kind of fighting it a bit don't get me wrong you live somewhere flat that bike is amazing that range on that bike is absolutely amazing and you can't knock it but I mean this is going to have lower range I've been riding it round on sport and boost ever since I've, I got it out so I'm not doing the best range test with it when you've reviewed a few e-bikes you tend to start to run out of superlatives for stuff and you end up using the same words all the time and one I tend to use the most is fab the bike's fab or it does something fab I think that covers it but this bike deserves a bit more it's a bit more than fab it's a really good bike and it deserves more customers I think people are put off by the looks of it and to be honest safety wise it's a good colour can't really miss it it's white and orange well I'd have preferred a black one and I'll explain that in the breakdown why I'd have preferred because it's more masculine I don't need to but I'll probably end up repeating it in the breakdown so we've done roads we've done gravel we've done cycle paths so I wonder what it's like on the grass well it's fine I can hear that motor whirring a bit at the moment it's the first time I've heard it it is in boost mode mind it's been in boost mode since I've gone through all the ratios on it the settings and I don't want to do any work it's the whole idea behind e-bikes that they did the majority of the work for you if you want some exercise I'll go get that pro out but yeah the manners of this bike they're pretty good you know it don't matter what you ride it on it's not the sort of thing you're going to want to take off road properly off road the obvious reasons it's not it's not an off road bike but uh, you know stuff like this it's fine 
really is fine. Even dry grass. It smells quite sweet actually. It's mulching out, it's because of the rain. Any of you that own horses will probably get that, they, you know what smell I'm smelling. Yeah, it's quite bumpy, but as you can see, it's not struggling with anything. Well, I guess that's the nature of this bike. It doesn't seem to struggle with anything. Yeah, because it's so quiet and just about here, that motor working. But as you know, when you're not pedalling, you're not pulling any volts or ampage from this bike. So that's when you hear the motor turn off. Little brake test coming down here on the grass, and they're fine. And this is wet grass as well. This is an horrible steep little thing going up here. You can probably see it from here. Look, see if we can get up that. One, two, boost. Oh yeah, absolutely no problems whatsoever. Straight up. Oh, I've got a cube, fat bike, a normal one. I'd probably kill myself trying to come up here on that. Yeah, it's got really good manners, this bike. And I haven't come across anything yet. It seems bothered about. To be fair, this is about as off, off road as you're going to take one of these or anybody's going to want to take one of these but like i said it doesn't struggle with anything and i've been over all sorts today so those tires rolling up quite well i haven't had a puncture yet so we're going to go up another hill and this one's very steep as well what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to go all the way up to the top Instead of just where I normally cut off, I'm going to go all the way up to the all the way up to the top past the hospital, and then that just keeps going uphill as well. So let's just do some more hill climbing with it, but 12 mile an hour, steady pace. I'm in sport, and it's doing fine. What we have to remember is, and I know I keep saying it, with my pack on, I weigh in at pretty much 250 pounds. And on a bike that's meant to have 100 kilo, I think this one's 100 kilo, but I'll check when I get back. Yeah, 100 kilo max weight. This is fine. I think, like I said before, that's more for the wheels, not the frame. Frame's fine. But the other thing is, listen to how quiet this bike is. It's just quiet. That means no rolling resistance on the tyres. The tyres are brilliant. You can't necessarily feel that extra five newton meters of torque that this has got, but I know it's helping me. And I'm highly grateful for it first thing in the morning. So we continue going uphill. When you get used to, or when you're sort of used to riding those big 20 before tires, which are also, come on son, you can do it, which are also heavy bikes. These are just, they feel feather light and they're so nimble and responsive. And I like that. 
and I'm going to say it again, the, the suspension, the Anthony, but the tyres take the worst of it out. Well, I wouldn't say the worst of it. It takes out some of those little bumps that you just get tired of just going over. I mean, some of the pothole stuff I go through with the 20 befores, I wouldn't do with this because you'll end up with strange shaped wheels. I mean, this is all uphill. It's not the steepest hill, this bit. But it's all uphill and 15 mile an hour, pottering along, legal limit, rated IP6, something you can ride it in all weathers. But it does everything just so easily really does and it's just I don't know I feel like I'm having a little love affair with this e-bike it's just not what I'm used to riding it's really comfortable like I said before this seating position because of these handlebars it's far better don't be wrong I'm a big dude I'm also looking at ways of changing that hub out on the pro version I've got ideas for that bike there's various hubs out there I can use see more hill just keep going uphill 14 mile an hour I'm not struggling to pedal what else do you want from a bike? I, I know right now I could ride over to Leeds back to divide the time like I did before and I wouldn't have any problems with this bike riding around Leeds, none whatsoever it's just it's just a fab little thing well I say little thing yeah I think I'm having a little love affair with this bike
that's what we're dealing with well we've got altus there shimano altus gear set nine speed um ananda 250 watt mid-drive motor it's a fabulous thing we've got the usual engway rack which is brilliant you've got the new thickness derailleur guard they're a lot thicker than the old ones were nice grippy pedals i actually like these they're a bit wider than the ones that they normally put on let's get into the display so it's currently off up 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 takes you into boost there your modes this little button here press that and that takes you into the settings you can change it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour there's an on off button at the side there and that's about it it's that simple and that's all you want really as i said nine speed nice grips they do the job so we're back down to the bike again and it's tetro 180 millimeter rotors that ananda motor there look and tetro at the rear battery goes in there charges to this port here and that's where you lock it into the into the bike as you can see there look i'll pull the other one back there you go that's a lock you've got the cell royale and if you press this here there's your lights look they're not the brightest they're not the biggest but it does the job there you go you can have it flashing and then off metal mug guards front and rear and a really good kickstand the kickstands on these are brilliant well i do like these handlebars they're far, far more comfortable than the ones on the uh, pro as you know saddles a release saddle so you can pop it up and down as to where you want it cracking a little set of headlights and they're very bright at night I'm not sure what these are for. I believe they're for some sort of rack. One of my favourite bits. I love that bell. Simple, but sounds far much better than that little poppy buzzer that they have. But yeah, all in all, a really good little package. Free wheeling, 20 mile an hour down a slight hill. This thing pulls its own weight. So obviously, because it's heavy and it's going downhill, you get out some speed on it. So like I said, on, um, I think I've done 40 odd miles on this, so. And to be honest, every, every mile's been a pleasure. Really has. I've not long got back so let's have a look to see where we're at on the old so with three out of five bars let's have a look through the info see how far oh, it says on there 42 miles so in theory this should do and i've basically been riding round in that nearly all the time it's got to be 80 and 90 miles in there surely which ain't bad going at all. Anyhow, the breakdown. This is for the woman that said she couldn't watch my videos because uh, I stroke my beard a lot when I'm thinking. This is for you. Anyway, let's get on with it. The Engway. So let's get on with it. The Engway P275ST. The ST stands for step through. What do I think of it? It's brilliant really is good outstanding even it's better than the pro and the reason it's better than the pro is because it's got gears that you can use and i didn't as you can see in the video find one hill i couldn't get up nine speed the battery is amazing um i had it on boost or sport 
pretty much all the time. I did test all the other things out and I'm still on three bars, which means it 42 miles or whatever it was that I rode round on it. I could be into 80, 80 miles, maybe a little bit more, which range wise, you're not going to be spending the day on 80 miles riding round on that without recharging. Um, I don't know what else you need. It's legal. Let's list a few things. It's UK legal. It's IP6 waterproof. It's got nine gears. It's got a battery that goes on forever. It's 36 volts and 70 Newton meters. It's brilliant. I, I really am struggling to find any fault with it. And if there's any fault with it in my head, it's I ain't that keen on the colour. White and orange. And although it's safer riding around on a bright bike like that, not brilliant for me. I'd, I'd rather look like Batman. Um, I carry enough lights anyway. But that shouldn't really detract from it. That rear light is a bit abysmal. And I can't, I don't think you can charge it. So you've got to swap the batteries out. Which is going to be annoying and not very cheap at all. But you can always get a fixed light. They're not expensive. Saddle. I was comfortable on it. Fine. Um... And I did two 20 odd, well, I did one 30 odd mile ride and one 12 mile ride or whatever it was, and I was fine on it. I wouldn't want to spend eight hours on it, but you can always get a decent saddle for about 20 or 30 quid. But that one, if you're just going 10 or 15 miles to working back, it's fine. I'll repeat it again, there wasn't an ill I couldn't get up, and it surprised me with that. There wasn't one ill I couldn't manage to get up, and that was the steepest hills I've got around me, so... 36 volts as well. I couldn't really feel the five extra newton meters it's got over the over the um, Pro, but it's there and it's helping me. And like I said, most of the time I had it either on turbo or boost, pretty much boost all the way. So I'm really surprised to see where the battery's at. If you were to play around with the help settings, you know, being eco a little bit more, being sort of like the lower end of battery usage you need 150 miles out of this thing on one charge but like i said i sort of tortured it it was in boost all the time any terrain really um grass gravel road i say you wouldn't really want to take it off road it's not built for that but those tires are fantastic the grip really good especially on those 27 and a half inch wheels so i'm going to cut this one short what am I going to give it out of 10? Because I could go on forever about my little love affair with this bike. And I'm going to give it 9.4. And I'd give it 9.5 if it was black. I'm going to give it 9.45. Which is 0.05 just below my favourite bike of Engways at the moment. Which is just below my favourite bike of Engways at the moment. Which is the Engway Engine Pro 2.0. And look like I said it's I'd have probably give it a little bit more if it had been in black so going back to what I was saying earlier in the video about Engwe have put the wrong motor and the wrong gear system in the wrong bike that stands historically like I said women like a step through I have a feminine side I'm happy with it and that's why I like step throughs that I'm getting old but it's it's essentially a ladies bike but it's brilliant and if that system would have been put into the into the pro they'd have had a bestseller on their hands it would be brilliant absolutely brilliant i've not given up with that pro yet i'm looking at a shimano nexus 8 internal gear hub which actually has a twist throttle, throttle for the gears so there's Probably that going to be coming up in the next couple of months because I'm not getting rid of that bike because I've not given up on it. And once I've got an eight-speed Pro, I'm going to be out of all the, all these problems that I'm having with it and what everybody else. And I, I think to do it, it's going to be less than a couple of hundred quid to have one of the best best sort of commuter bikes out there. It's a really good bike, but like I said, it's really good if you live somewhere predominantly flat, and I don't, and that's where. The P275 ST sort of pips it at the post. It's a better bike. Or it's be it's not better looking, but it's a better bike. 
anyway i'll leave a link at the end now into my review of the p75 pro you can have a look at that they're both good bikes but this one is a brilliant bike it's if but if you're a bloke buying in black just to have it it's just absolutely brilliant i'm not just saying that it really works well that nine speed it's brilliant anyway that's it for now till the next review